Hi guys, during college placements, I was asked a string based question. And even after coming up with an optimized solution, interviewer asked me, can you think of any more possible solutions? I kept using different STL containers, different algorithms. And by the end of the interview, we had discussed six possible solutions, good solutions with time complexity, space complexity. And it is by far one of the best interviews I have ever had. I was so proud of it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that in DSA, if you're even able to solve a question, it's not like that is it. You have to think of more possible solutions. You have to think of time and space complexity. You have to think of optimizations. So when you solve questions, keep that in mind that you're not trying to just get a possible solution. You should be able to think of all the possible solutions so that you can discuss the same with your interviewer. So today we are going to start with strings. So many requests have come for it since there is no other playlist which concentrates only on string questions. And this is such an underrated topic and it is so, so important because so many interviewers ask questions related to strings and it will help you solve so many questions. So let's get started with the first question, which is actually very, very common and very, very important. Let's get started. So this is the question that we are going to solve today. We are given two strings A and B and we have to see whether those two strings are anagrams of each other. If you don't know the meaning of anagram, you should be knowing it because it will be used very commonly. Like someone can just come and tell you that, okay, these two strings are anagrams. You should be knowing such little things. But if you don't know, let's quickly see what is anagram. So basically both the strings should contain the same characters, only the order of the characters should be different. Basically you're rearranging the characters like act, and tag are anagram of each other. Now, another point to notice over here is that the characters can repeat. Like in this example, geeks for geeks and for geeks, geeks, you can obviously see that geeks is repeating two times, so all the characters are repeated. In this particular question, it is also given to us that A and B consists of lower case characters only. So A and B can have how many characters? In a total of 26 possible characters. But even if that was not given to us, the possible characters is 256. So we, we know that, okay, there are only specific characters that are possible in the strings, right? What's the next thing that we notice? We notice that we are just rearranging the characters. That means the lengths of both the strings should be same. So the first check that can be there is that, okay, if the length of string A and string B is not same, then obviously it is not anagram and we can just return false from there. So I'm just discussing all the possible test cases that we should be thinking of. Here we have to just return a true or false that whether two strings are anagrams or not. We will discuss possible solutions. Now, first thing that we discussed that, okay, we are just rearranging the character. Second thing we discussed that because we are just rearranging the length of the string should remain same. Now we have to basically see that all the characters are same. Now here's a tip that will help you long term in DSA. And the tip is that whenever you are talking about rearranging stuff, always consider sorting. It is a very good possible solution. If you have watched the mock interview with Gaurav Sin on my main channel, I interviewed him and it was again based on sorting only. Basically we were rearranging the rows in a matrix over there. So again, sorting had to be considered. Same thing over here, one possible solution is sorting. Why sorting? See string and B both, if we arrange them in one particular way, we know that, okay, uh, the rearrangement should be same. Now, if I sort both the strings, if I sort A also, and if I sort B also, then they should generate the same string if both were anagrams, right? Let me just take example and show you. Say, suppose we are dealing with A, B, C, A, and A, A, B, C, right? Even after sorting this, this will also become A, A, B, C only. So even if this was like A, C, A, B instead of A, A, B, C, if we sort both of them, both of them will become A, A, B, C. And suppose there is one extra character or suppose there is one less character or one character is different, the sorted strings will not be same. So this is one common solution. Whenever you think of rearranging, think of sorting that can sorting give me a possible solution. So I'm also going to keep writing all the solutions so that you are used to writing the code as well. Okay, so let's try writing the code. So all I have to do is sort both the strings. So I'm going to write sort a dot begin to a dot n and I'm going to do the same thing for the other string also. So I'm going to sort it from begin to n, right? b dot n. And once I have sorted the strings, all I have to return is see if a is equal to b, then I will return true. Otherwise, I'll return false. So this is a condition that I am returning. So this will either return true or false and that is what I am returning also. Another thing to note over here is that sorting makes changes to the same string. So the string is actually being changed. So I can compare the original strings as well. Let's compile it and see. Work. Let's submit it and see. 
works but this is only one possible solution so i am going to write over here method one and let's discuss the time and the space complexity what will be the time complexity it will be order of n log n because i am doing what i am sorting and what will be the space complexity it will be order of n because we are not using any extra space right so auxiliary space complexity becomes order of one so this is one possible solution in the first method what we did was we actually did the rearrangement we arranged the two strings in a way that we know that okay both the strings are equal or not now do we really need to rearrange we just have to find whether those are anagrams or not so instead of actually doing the rearrangement the second thing that we can do is actually compare the counter of each character now since we said that okay each character can be repeated it can come like two times three times like that if i know the counter of each character for both the strings and if the counter is same for all the characters then obviously the strings are same right let me say that again so instead of rearranging what we are doing is we are counting the number of characters in both the strings and if the characters are exactly same then the strings are anagrams if that is not the case then those are not anagrams now that is the concept but again this concept can be converted to code in multiple ways so you can use multiple sql containers one way is to just use vectors now you will say that how can we use vectors see we know that okay there are only limited number of characters so say uh, the character if the character is a b c all i have to do is in the vector the index that i use it suppose ch is the character then the index that i will be working with will just become ch minus a so what will happen it will take the ascii value of a character and then i will use the index what ch minus a so in the end in this particular question we have only lower case characters so our vector length will be of 26 so we can take a vector of 26 length and then uh, two vectors and put the counters and then see that okay two both the vectors look same or not another way to write the same logic is use an ordered maps instead of vectors so in that what i'll do is instead of using indices i will store the characters as the keys and the counters as the values so let's try writing the code with an ordered map and it will be your homework to try writing the code with vectors we will uh, write another solution with vectors so don't worry about that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take two unordered maps so i am going to take one ordered map and what am i going to store i am going to store a character and it will be an integer this integer will be a counter right i am going to call it count 1 so basically this will be for string 1 and similarly i am going to take another map for string 2 right so i am going to call it count 2 now i need to fill these two maps how am i going to fill these two maps i am going to go over uh, the two strings so suppose ch is the character in the string a i'm going through the entire string and all i am doing is i am increasing the counter of this ch by 1 in c++ by default the values are zero so if i do this by default it will just keep adding to 1 2 3 like that right the same thing i'm going to do for the second string also so i'm going to go through the second string and suppose ch is the character i just increase the counter this will be count of 1 and this will be count of 2 and what will i return i will return the condition that both the maps are same or not so i have filled both the maps so now i will return count 1 is equal to count 2 or not let's try compiling it let's try submitting it so this was the method 2 and what was the time and the space complexity over here see here we are going through both the strings once so here we are going to this string and we are going to this string and then we are just returning right so time complexity will be order of n where n is the size of the bigger string otherwise we can just write it as order of n plus order of m if n and m are the length of both the strings what will be the space complexity here we are requiring extra space so here say we have optimized on time so we have improved the time from n log into order of n but here we are taking more space here we were not using any extra space here we are using extra space and it will be order of n so that will be the maximum number of characters in both the maps right so order of n see suppose you gave this solution to your interviewer and now your interviewer told you that okay i want to optimize on time and it's fine if i use some extra space so this is a possible solution that you can get now let's get to the third method first and then we will discuss that in this method what did we do we used two maps and we had counters of both of them right so in this we had to go through both the strings and increase the counter of both of them one by one now do we really need two maps now this is another thing that will really help you a lot in a lot of dsa questions this is not the only question where we do that wherever we have to compare counters of like two uh, containers in one what we can do is increase the counter and in the second one what do we do we decrease the counter and then we check that okay is the value zero or not we just have to make sure that the counter in the end becomes zero let me explain that once more so now instead of using two maps what i can do is i can use just one map 
right and in the same map here what i will do is in this counter itself i will just do minus minus and once i do that in the end i don't have to check that okay are both the equal or not because there is no second map instead of that what i will do is i will check that all the values are zero or not even if there is one value that is not zero then that means that both the maps are not equal that means that both the strings are not anagrams why is that see if there was one extra character in b then what will happen we would have reduced the value from 0 to minus 1 then the counter value would have been negative if there was one extra value in uh, in string a then the value would be positive it would not be zero but only if all the characters are exactly same only if the length is also same if all the characters are same all the values will be zero right and that is what we are going to use so this is yet another space optimization so your interviewer can go like here yeah, you have used two maps do you really need to use two maps then you will tell your interviewer no i can actually optimize it more on space instead of using two maps i'll use one map and as we discussed earlier we can actually code both the methods using both unordered maps and vectors so the this third method that we are going to do we are actually going to write the same thing using unordered map but since we have already done that to make it different i am going to try writing this one using vectors now i wrote this one using map and writing this one using vector it is a homework to try both the solutions with using vector and unordered map and i want you to tell me in the comments that yeah you tried all the five methods so i'm going to need only one vector instead of two vectors over here and i'm going to take vector of integers i'm going to just store the values right i'm going to just call it vec for now to keep it simple what will be the size of this vector it will be 26 since in this case it is given that it is lower case characters even if 26 was not given to you you could have just written 256 right i i am initializing the whole thing by zero now what will i do i will go through both the strings one by one so similarly i am going through the first string first so when i go through this i am going to increase the counter how am i going to increase the counter my index value will be what as i had said earlier it will be ch minus a now i am going to increase this counter by one and i am going to do the same thing while traversing through the second string so what am i doing for every character in b i am going to reduce the counter okay here i was increasing the counters here i am reducing the counters in the end what do i have to check i have to check that okay the entire thing in the end should be zero so what do i do i'll traverse through the entire a uh, vector so here i'm going through go through all the values in the vector and i'm going to check that if x value is not equal to 0 i can just return false from here otherwise in the end i will return true so here in the end we want that all the character counters should become zero first we increase then we reduce right now another optimization that we can do over here is that when we are reducing itself we can check that okay if ever it happens that after reducing the value becomes less than 0 so if this happens we can just return false from here itself another way of writing this would have been that before reducing the value we could have checked over here that if the value is equal to 0 then you return false why am i doing that i am doing this because see here i am increasing here the value can be 0 or after reducing it can be less than 0 only if the number of characters in b is more only if there is a character that was not there in a will come so this is another optimization that we can do and your interviewer will really like that you do this optimization so these are the little things that you should be used to doing let's compile and see whether this works let's submit and and see so it's not just one question that you solved today we covered a lot of little little things first thing whenever we are talking about rearranging we can always talk about sorting second thing that we discussed that okay we can solve the same thing using unordered map using vectors and then third thing that we noticed that instead of maintaining two counters whenever we are comparing two values we can use same counter by increasing and reducing i am sure these three points are going to really help you in long term I know we have had like little breaks in CFS, and I am really trying to get back. I hope you really like the video, and I hope you will show up tomorrow. And I will try my best to maintain the consistency and show up tomorrow as well. See you. Ta.